Okay. So I was thinking about all the different ways that is like, you know, wherever the eclipse path is, that's going to be the strongest expression of this solar eclipse, right? And it just happens to be going over us. Yeehaw. <laughs> and, you know, I know people are going to set up their cameras. They're going to go outside. You know, I can't tell people not to do that. They're going to do it anyway. But if you're going to do that, at least do your mantras beforehand during if you can even if you do it silently in your mind it's better than nothing okay <laughs> if you're going to be outside looking in the cameras you know try to protect yourself because you know in india they say not to look at the eclipse because it's bad luck yeah not I, just I really for would your not, eyes uh, but for your yeah. for your your soul right like that. so uh, though it is true that uh, i mean if you have if you are listening to us uh, over the past few years of the webinars or eclipse or whatnot, I'm the one who usually brings in the point that you do not look at an eclipse. It's very important, actually. I would definitely not encourage uh, to for anyone to look at the eclipse and all that. Uh, astrologically, that is the time period when the soul gets covered by darkness, which is the sun is covered by the darkness of Rahu and all that. So it usually can indicate dark or chaotic energy is coming more into our lives more easily. There are plenty of anecdotes I can say for people who watch the eclipse. Then they get fired from the job or they decide to, their boss starts acting like crazy on them and they have to change the job and all that just because they invited chaos energy into their life. So it's a very important thing. So uh, definitely I would not encourage anyone to watch the eclipse directly. Let others watch it. Let them suffer. <laughs> just do your thing. I know. People are going to do it, but I would just suggest yeah. don't watch it while it's happening. You know, like try to do your yeah, mantra stateside. Even... I know you yeah, wouldn't would watch it afterward either, that, but people yeah. are, honey, yeah. people are going to do it, okay? And so, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, if uh, you're going uh, to go outside uh, and watch it, protect yeah. yourself. Yeah, if you if you want to do like uh, make can make yourself into guinea pig and all that, you are welcome to do that. <laughs> Please do feel free in reporting what happened after that also. But like I said, yeah. uh, astrologically, I've seen in multiple cases where people who watch the eclipse. Uh, I had problems coming after that. So I'm not really yeah. angry at that. Of yeah. course, what uh, Katya's uh, here though is that as she's, uh, let's look into that also. What's going to happen in Oregon to Texas also here. Yeah. yeah. And also I'll add whatever mantras you do during the eclipse are intensified and, and will empower you and protect you for the next six months. That's so right. exactly also right. I want you to think back to our first set of um, eclipses this year, which were in this, in, um, you know, Rahu is in same, right? Um, think back to that time, because that was six months ago. And now that we're at our second eclipse, if you made any, um, you know, uh, affirmations to yourself, I'm going to do this and this or whatever over the next six months, where are you at with that? You know, how did that last eclipse pan out? Because whatever you do now is going to last till the next eclipse is in April. So that's why we say stay inside and do your mantras because it's like amplifying it by, you know, what, a thousand or something, right? So, you know, help yourself. Don't hurt yourself, okay? <laughs> uh, and then think about, you know, the circus that's happened since the last 2017 one we had go over the U.S. And yeah, don't do it. Okay, so this is how I think it's going to pan out from Oregon to Texas, generally. Ripples of change, a solar eclipse path passing through a country signifies a period of potential change and transformation for that nation. It can indicate shifts in political, social, or economic spheres in the regions affected. The path from Oregon to Houston suggests that these areas may experience influential developments or events that have a broader impact on the country as a whole. And so if you live in those areas, what you want to do is you want to find when your state uh, what its birthday is, right? Every state has a birthday. You're going to pull up the chart of that birthday and you're going to find out what house for that chart is Virgo because that's where the eclipse is happening. And that is the sphere of influence for your state that that's probably going to affect, okay? I didn't do it for every state, but, you know, it's, message me if you have a hard time with it. I'll help you. Um, 
A heightened emotional climate. Solar eclipses can bring intensified emotional energy and the path of the eclipse may experience these effects more prominently. The passage through Oregon to Houston may witness heightened emotional resonance, triggering profound and passionate responses from individuals and communities in these areas. And as you know, for the whole U.S., um, the fourth house of the home has the Neptune retrograde. And there's a horrible homeless problem in Oregon. Um, it's it's really bad. I think that's part of what's how this is going to pan out. And then obviously the border crisis on the other end, right? National attention and focus. Eclipses that traverse specific regions tend to draw greater attention to that area. Path from Oregon to Houston suggests that these regions may be in the spotlight during the eclipse period. This increased attention could be in the form of political or social debates, which, hello, what are we in the middle of? Republican debate season, right? <laughs> Notable events or emerging issues that capture natural na national interest. And uh, I think the next one is out West. I think the next Republican debate is out West. So that's going to be huge. Uh, influence on government and politics. As the eclipse path intersects various states, it may signal significant political implications or developments in those areas. Political dynamics election campaigns or policy changes could be influenced by the energies of the eclipse, potentially leading to shifts in power structures or key decisions. I think there's going to be some event that happens. I don't know how it's not going to happen with that Mars K2 conjunction, you know, uh, opposite um, Jupiter and uh, Uranus. I mean, I think there's going to be, I hate to say this, but I think there's going to be some kind of violent event that happens out west it's going to shift political opinion um yeah so just pay attention to the news at that time let's see how this pans out economic impact the states within the eclipse path may experience economic effects or changes this could manifest as shifts in industry trends financial fluctuations or new economic opportunities you know elon musk lives in texas now um, the eclipse may impact sectors specific to these regions, such as technology and innovation from Oregon or, <laughs> I'm sorry, technology and innovation for Oregon and energy for Texas. Those two areas are probably going to be really affected by this. And then we have environmental concerns. Solar eclipses can sometimes indicate environmental shifts or events like a flood or a fire or something like that, right? Something blowing up. The path from Oregon to Houston passing through diverse landscapes suggests a heightened awareness of environmental issues. This may involve discussions on climate change, natural disasters, or environmental conservation efforts in affected regions. And as you know, the West has had horrible flooding and fires, especially California. Um, so those are just some of the you know general ways that this could pan out for, for out there. So what do you think? I think the uh, one big thing is going to be the economic impact for sure. So we're going to see like uh, um, a lot of food, as you said, food crisis or so, so like uh, some kind of issues around that for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely uh, uh, Mercury is getting impacted. Mercury is the plant of commerce. Commerce will be hit. So you could say that one way or the other it might happen. The influence of government is also something very huge. Right now, uh, government is about to be shut down as of now. Uh, tomorrow and all that so it's it can be crazy actually so we might begin to see that uh, that kind of impact uh, happening for some time mm -hmm. i think there's a, a rarely normally you always hear the government is about to shut down but then they do some they are able to resolve it or whatnot but this is probably mm -hmm. the first time that's actually going to shut down like uh, five years in a long time actually so that issue that you have already seen eclipse in action though let me put it that way so you are going to see the consequences around that also that is also one of the aspects that might happen also. The environmental concern is also another thing. Definitely, uh, eclipse is happening in Virgo sign. Virgo is the sign of forests, actually. Though the actual sign of forest is Sagittarius, Virgo is the sign of greenery, wherever you find green and all that and so forth. So that is also Virgo, actually. You might begin to see uh, issues around that, actually. So definitely forest fire and all that, you might continue to see that kind of thing happening more. So problems around that could also continue for sure, actually. Uh, now the uh, Oregon through, uh, of course, Oregon through Texas, 
Texas is definitely going to have a border crisis. The economic impact is going to hit uh, these uh, these states more for sure. The environmental concerns are definitely in Oregon is going to be huge. Uh, I think last time when the uh, eclipse happened, there was a big. Uh, uh, I think the whole um, uh, electric power line got uh, froze or something in Texas, something like that. Uh, some crazy things like that happened uh, yes. last time. So, yeah, so I think ice storm. Uh, something. So, ice storm and all that. So all those kind of uh, crazy climate and weather and all that, you might uh, I, I'm not be surprised to see that kind of environmental thing going on in this part of the, on those states actually. So that's one of the things for sure to watch out for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, uh the solar flares that were mm-hmm. that were pretty bad past couple months um they're increasing in intensity and when the sun goes erratic um and it's with other planets then it kind of subsumes that planet's energy right and that's what makes the sun more powerful and then because the sun's more powerful it produces solar flares um and those solar flares are what's causing, you know, all the lovely geomagnetic storms we've had, all the uh, auroras around the around the world, you know, is because of these solar flares. But those same flares are what are um, causing pulses in our um, in the crust and in the core, and that's what produces earthquakes. So, you know. Um, People have been talking for years about the big one in California, right? When is the big one going to happen? Well, this could be a precursor. This could be kind of like a foreshadowing in a way of a big earthquake hitting the West. So you're forewarned. (laughs) You know, I don't know how, you know, I guess just make sure if you live out there that you've got your earthquake emergency kit right? You've got your food, you've got everything ready to go so that you can grab your bag. Okay. That's something that I think, um, you know, the West has always been afraid of when is the big one going to hit, you know? So 